Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be on topic episode 38. If you are new to my on topic videos, this is where I discuss book, TV, and movie news, but just the news that I'm interested in or that I want to discuss with you guys. All of the information, all of the sources will be linked down below like always, and I will start with the book news, then the TV news, and then the movie news. I think the only movie news I have is Passion Flicks related, but I have a lot of news, so let's get into it and we're going to start with the book news first. We have a couple of cover reveals and then just some other book news. So we finally got news on the last book in the Darkverse series by Rue Nix. So the sixth book is The Syndicator and this one comes out October 29th. I'm pretty sure I binged all five books last year and I somewhat enjoyed the series. Most of them I think I gave three stars but I'm very excited to see how the series ends and I can't wait to read the last book. We got a cover reveal for Wild and Wrangled by Lila Sage. This is the fourth and final book in the Rebel Blue Ranch series. I am so in love with all of these covers in this series. This one is just so beautiful. I love the like pink and yellow it's just so pretty. I'm obsessed with these covers. This fourth book comes out January 1st. I don't think I've talked about this, but we got the new traditionally published cover for Pucked by Helena Hunting. I honestly kind of don't like this cover. Like I do like the sprayed edges, which is of Alex and Violet, but I think, I mean, maybe it'll look better in person, but the pink and blue is just like so unnecessarily bright and like, I don't know, it just doesn't really scream hockey romance to me. Like I get it, the puck is like sliding on the ice, I guess, but I don't know, I don't love this cover. I'm waiting to see what it looks like in person because it might be better in person. I do have like the original uh, indie paperback, I guess. I mean, I don't love this cover either, but I feel like I need to reread this book, but I don't know if I need two editions. This new edition comes out September 24th. We also got a new cover of Onyx by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This is the second book in the Lux series, if you didn't know. Entangled Teen is redoing the entire series. They're getting new covers in hardcover, and this is the second book in the series. I personally love these new covers. I love the first one. I love this one. I love the colors that they're deciding to go with and I'm loving the sprayed edges. This new edition is out November 5th. Then we got a cover reveal for two books that I predicted in one of my last On Topic videos. I had noticed that these two books were on the Bloom Books website and that Amazon had the new editions for pre-order. While Bloom Books officially announced the cover of Frigid and Scorched by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I actually don't mind these covers. I think they're very basic and to the point like they do give off winter Christmassy romances, which I believe both of these do take place in the winter, but I don't fully remember to be honest. It's been a very, very long time since I have read both of these books. The first edition prints will have sprayed edges. The first book, Frigid, comes out November 5th and Scorched comes out December 3rd. I believe I talked about this a while back that the Winston Brothers series by Penny Reed would be republished traditionally with source books and they have actually announced the new cover for Truth or Beard, which is the first book in the series. This new edition will be available January 28th and they're doing two different editions, which is kind of weird. So I guess the first print will be the red cover and that will be like a limited edition. It also will have sprayed edges, I guess. And then the standard print edition will be like that white beige color. I believe both editions will have full illustrations, a map of Green Valley, and bonus scenes. But obviously the first run will just be the red edition, which is interesting. I'm kind of wondering why they're doing that. And are they going to do that for the rest of the series? Because then that means like they're literally doing two editions. I do have the like original self-published edition here. I probably will buy the red edition, to be quite honest, just because it is a little bit more different than this one. And I do really love this series, so I probably will end up buying the red edition in January. I'm excited to see what the rest of the series is going to look like. Are they going to do 
red for the entire series? Are they going to change up the colors? I do kind of hope we get different colors. I think that would be really fun. A.L. Jackson has joined Entangled Amara and she will publish two books or republish two books with Amara. I have not read any of her books yet. I definitely need to and I might check out these ones because they are I think on my list on Goodreads to read. I have a couple of her books that I want to read. So Give Me a Reason and Say It's Forever both have new covers and they have sprayed edges and designs on the edges and both of them will actually be published on the same day January 21st. Let me know if you've read any of A.L. Jackson's books and which ones I should read because I haven't read any yet. Another author I have not read yet but is on my TBR and that is Avery Keelan. She will publish her Rules of Game series and Lakeside University series with Bramble. I'm sure you've seen some of the covers for the Rules of the Game series. Uh, they're very like cute cartoon illustrated covers. The first book is Offside. Offside is the first one that they will traditionally publish and that one will be available summer 2025. I do believe they're somewhat keeping the covers. They're gonna kind of like touch them up a little bit and I'm sure they're gonna do like some sort of like maybe special sprayed edges or something like that, but the covers have not been officially announced yet or anything like that. But I have been eyeing the Rules of the Game series, so I will definitely check this out probably next year when it is traditionally published. That was it for book news. I do feel like I'm missing a few, but I've kind of like fallen off of keeping track of things. I will do better for next month, but that is it for all the book news. And now on to some TV news. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune is going to be a prime video series. It was announced that this book will be a prime video series, but they are going to change the name of it. It's going to be called Every Year After. And Heart of Dixie creator, is it Lila, Leela? Gerstein is attached to adapt this book and be the showrunner. Apparently she also worked on The Handmaid's Tale. So she has a lot of experience with TV shows. I am very curious to see this as a TV show. I have read this book. I didn't really enjoy it. I think I gave it three or two stars. It was definitely like a two star read for me in my soul, but I might have just generously given it three stars. I have a feeling they changed the title because The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is also on Prime Video, is very successful. And honestly, if we're really thinking about it, this is quite similar to The Summer I Turned Pretty. So I think that's why they changed the name of the show because they didn't want to have summer in the title to link it to the summer I turned pretty and to like have people compare it. But you know, at the end of the day, people are going to compare it because it is essentially about this girl who falls in love with this boy every summer. And there's like another brother that's also kind of there. So I feel like there is gonna be some comparisons, but that's probably why they changed the title or decided to. And I'm also assuming that that's why they decided to adapt this because it is similar to The Summer I Turned Pretty and they want to have another successful show like that. I don't know if I'm gonna watch this show. I mean, I haven't even seen The Summer I Turned Pretty and I loved those books. I'm waiting for the last season to come out so I can just binge the entire show. I didn't love this book enough to be invested in the characters or the story as a TV show. So I feel like I've talked about the Fallen TV show off and on for the last couple of years. Obviously they filmed the entire TV show and I think they were kind of shopping around to see where it will premiere. And I'm a little confused on where it's going to premiere. There is a YouTube channel that put it up, which is called Sky Show, which I think is a German channel, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but then apparently it's also going to air on Sky Atlantic, Sky Go, and Global Play August 12th. I don't know what that means for like over here. I don't know if I will be able to watch it somewhere in Canada. I definitely have to look into it. I will probably look into it like after August 12th to kind of see where it aired and stuff because it's kind of unclear on where it's going to premiere. Like all of these channels seem to have it for August 12th, but 
I don't know if that is necessarily official. If you know it's premiering in the US or Canada at some point, please let me know because I cannot find any information about this TV show. This TV show is the adaptation of Fallen by Lauren Kate. I personally did not even like that book or that series. I think I read the first two or three books, but I really enjoyed the movie back in the day and I'm intrigued by the TV show. So I do kind of want to watch it if I can find it somewhere. We finally have a premiere date for Tell Me Lies season two. So it will air September 4th with two episodes and then the rest of the season will premiere weekly. I don't know if there's a trailer yet for season two, but they have been releasing a lot of behind the scenes and photos if you follow their Instagram. I will link it down below, uh, but I don't think they've released official trailer yet. Just a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I'm very excited for season two. I loved season one. It was very interesting, toxic, dramatic, and just very entertaining. So I'm excited to see what season two brings. One of my favorite TV shows ever is A Discovery of Witches, which is an adaptation of the books by Deborah Harkness. The TV show is normally on AMC. However, I believe AMC and Netflix are partnering for about a month or so, and AMC is lending some of their shows to Netflix, which means all three seasons will be available August 19th on Netflix USA. Unfortunately, it won't be on Netflix Canada, which is very upsetting to me. I tried to find information on if the AMC deal is also working with Netflix Canada, but they are not. But if you live in the US, you can finally watch one of my favorite TV shows on Netflix, August 19th. I am begging you, please, please go watch it when it is on there, please, please. I feel like I have been talking about this show since 2018, or actually even before that. I talked about the casting when we first got casting, probably around 2017. But I love this show so much. If you love paranormal romance, please, please go watch this show. If you honestly want to get a head start on watching the show, the first episode is free on YouTube. It is on the AMC YouTube channel and I'll link it down below. You can watch the first episode. You don't have to have a premium account. You don't have to sign in for anything. It is free on YouTube. So I will leave that down below if you want to get a head start before August 19th. That way you can binge the rest of the episodes after. Normally I would be like, go read the book first, but I'm like, no, don't, don't even bother. Just go watch the TV show. Okay. Please go watch the TV show August 19th because this is where it gets interesting. Okay. Teresa Palmer shared on her Instagram that Netflix would be having all three seasons of A Discovery of Witches. And she was basically just trying to like get it out there and stuff, which is what reminded me that the show was going to be on Netflix for a little bit. But she was replying to comments and I read those comments and I was like, what are you saying, girl? So let me just kind of go through them quickly. So somebody first asked, are you going to film another season now that there's another book? Teresa Palmer replied, here's hoping. What? Somebody else asked a question. I just started reading the black Bird Oracle, which is the newest book in the series. Will there be a series from that one as well? Will you return as Diana Bishop? Teresa Palmer responded and said, we hope so. What does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean we are getting a fourth season? Mind you, there is also already a fourth and a fifth book. Times Convert is the fourth book and Blackbird Oracle is the fifth book. That's the one that just came out. Is she just being like hopeful about it? Or is she like trying to hint that like, if it does well on Netflix, they could do another season. But if they do like a fourth and a fifth season, like I'm so down. I am so down. If they have all of the same casting, all of the same crew, all of the same like editors, set designers, all of that jazz, because the reason why the first three seasons are so special is just because it is so beautiful, so magical. The acting is just phenomenal. And I need you guys to go watch the TV show when it's on Netflix, okay? Please do that for me so I can maybe get a fourth season. Last quick TV show announcement. We finally got 
news of the sixth and final season of What We Do in the Shadows. So it will premiere October 21st, and I believe there will be 11 episodes. That is currently what IMDb says. Um, and it looks like I think the first three episodes will premiere October 21st. This is one of my favorite TV shows ever. It is a comfort TV show for me. I rewatch it over and over again, and it is going to be perfect in October. I'm very sad that this is the last season, but I'm kind of happy that, like, they get to end it on their own terms, you know? Like, they get to wrap up all the storylines and have, like, a proper goodbye instead of FX just ending the show. So I'm glad we're going to get, like, a official goodbye, but I am so sad that this show is ending. I feel like we could have gotten like 10 seasons. I'm excited to see what this last season is going to entail. I cannot wait to see what they do. I just feel like each episode is so creative and unique and the acting is just amazing and it's so funny and I love everything about this TV show, so I'm very excited about the last season on October 21st. Now on to the movie news. I thought I only had Passion Flix news, but I actually have one other news before the Passion Flix stuff. So Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver is going to become a movie. Chris McKay will direct the film for Lyrical Media and Writer Picture Company. There is no screenwriter attached yet, but obviously we do have a director, which is very hopeful that the project will go forward. I have read this book. I actually really liked it. I thought it was very interesting and different and unique and fun and entertaining and dark. And I do think it'll be a good movie for the right audience. I don't know if it's a movie that everybody will want to see or go watch, but I do think it'll kind of give you like that shock value a little bit, kind of. I don't want to say like salt burn, but like it could kind of give the shocking elements that like salt burn had and people's reactions to that. If they decide to do everything that is in this book, obviously they could change some of those scenes. So who knows? But yeah, I'm actually interested in this becoming a movie and I can't wait to see who they cast. The rest is all passion flicks stuff. So we have some news on the Air He Breathes adaptation. The movie will premiere August 22nd. There is a teaser trailer that is already out. I will link that down below. Uh, the poster, we already have a beautiful poster, which is gorgeous. I read this book. I somewhat liked it. I probably will watch the movie in my own time at some point. I don't really have much thoughts on this. I know a lot of people are very excited for this movie and this adaptation, and I hope it's good. I hope it does not disappoint. Lick by Kylie Scott has actually wrapped filming. I have the first two books in this little bind up, but Lick is the first book in the Stage Dive series, which is a romance series about a band. Louise Alston will direct Lick. She directed The Will and another Passion Flix project. I'm totally blanking on the other one that she directed, but she has a lot of experience with Passion Flix adaptations and we got the casting, so I will go through that. We have Travis Burns as David, Brooke Lee as Evelyn, Zach Mines as Ben, Eric Brody as Jimmy, and Joseph McNabb as Mal. It has been years since I've read this series. I don't remember anything about it. I don't remember what the characters are supposed to look like. I don't remember the plot. I just know it's about a band. So I don't really have any expectations regarding this movie. The casting does seem pretty great. I'm glad that they casted some newer people. I believe they did work on original music for the show, which is very interesting. I don't know what that's gonna sound like. It might be kind of bad, but who knows? This is one that I might actually reread and watch the movie and do a whole video on. I know I am very, very, very behind on Flix adaptations. I'll kind of explain why after I'm done all the, the news here. Yeah, I'm excited to see what it looks like and I wonder if they are going to do the next books in the series as well. Quickly, obviously, I believe they are still working on the Granger Brothers series. The two movies they have already filmed, they're kind of in like post-production. I think they are probably like almost done with them. They had a team screening at, I think, one of 
the movies. I'm pretty sure the second one probably. So I'm assuming that that one's almost ready to go. And I believe we will probably get news of that one after the air he breathes. Lastly, the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I believe they are still in the process of casting. I have a feeling they're probably going to be almost done casting. So they did a worldwide casting call for some of the brothers. I am very, very excited to see who they cast. I have a little bit of high, too high expectations for this adaptation because Tosca and J.R. Ward seem very excited. Like both of them seem very excited about it. Oh, I guess I should hold this up. But yeah, the first book is Dark Lover and they are casting obviously some of the brothers that appear in here. I'm actually kind of excited about this adaptation, even though I know it's probably not going to be as good as I want it to be and as good as it could be if it was going somewhere else like AMC or HBO or something like that. But I'm still going to give it a chance and we'll see who they cast, I guess. But yeah, I, I have a feeling that they're kind of almost done the casting process so I believe it'll be only a matter of time before we get casting announcements because I do believe that they want to start filming soon right I think they wanted to film sometime this fall so uh yeah I am very excited for this adaptation I can't wait to see who they cast I'm sure there's some other passion flicks news but honestly I haven't really been paying attention because I'm very behind on watching some passion flicks adaptations. I know I promised I would do Wallbanger and I still haven't gotten around to it and the movie has been out for like what a couple months now already. First of all the book is bigger than I remember it being. It's kind of a long book right and I'm just like not necessarily in the mood to read that to be quite honest with you. I'm not in the mood to reread it. I have a feeling I'm not going to enjoy the book this time around. I did enjoy it back in the day, but I kind of have a feeling I won't enjoy it now. So that's why I've been kind of putting off rereading it and then watching the movie. I really want to be in the right mood to reread the book and watch it because I don't want it to be like a super negative mean video and I feel like if I'm not in the mood to reread it and watch it, it will be a negative video, if that makes sense. Like, I will be negative about it because I'm not in the mood for it. So I'm just waiting for the right moment for me to reread the book and watch it and do a whole video on it. It will come eventually. I just don't know when. Same for Torn, which is the sequel to Wicked. I think those are the only two that I wanted to do as of late. Everything else I'll just watch in my own time because I'm not interested in reading or rereading the book. I know like the point of my Passion Flicks videos was to do it like when the movie came out to kind of give like a review and stuff, but I just want to be in the right mood to produce a good video. I don't feel like I've been in the right mood for that as of late. I mean, I've been struggling to read in general, so I definitely don't really have Passion Flicks on my mind at the moment. So if you're still waiting for it, I'm very sorry. I will get to it eventually. I just don't know when. So that is it for this on topic video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know all of the book, TV, and movie news that you're excited about. And let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on the news that I shared. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!